So now that you're a covalent formula and naming master, let's talk about what these compounds actually look like. And we demonstrate that by using something called Lewis structures. So a Lewis structure is a representation of a molecule showing how valence electrons are arranged among the atoms in a molecule or ion. That's a fancy way of telling us that it's a pictorial representation of what these look like. So when writing Lewis structures, we only care and only include the valence electrons. All of the other electrons that they have do not factor into this. Electrons involved in bonding, which we represent by lines, are called bonding pairs because there's two of them. A pair is two. Meanwhile, electrons not involved in bonding are called lone pairs or unshared pairs, once again, because there's going to be two of them and they aren't going to be involved in the bond. You want to keep in mind the octet rule when drawing Lewis structures. So everyone on the periodic table wants to have eight valence electrons except hydrogen and helium that are only looking to have two, so they essentially follow the duet rule. So let's talk about our steps to writing Lewis structures. Now, I know as I go through these steps, you're going to be thinking, what is this lady talking about? However, I guarantee you as we practice them and as we work with them, you're going to realize Lewis structures are super easy and you've got this. So in step number one, you're going to calculate the total number of valence electrons you need, which you're going to hear me referring to as what is your need. Hydrogen and helium need two. All other elements need 8. So you're going to do your calculations, multiply if you have multiple of something, and you're going to add them all together to get your total need of electrons. Then you're going to calculate the total number of valence electrons you have, which you'll hear me refer to as the have. This is the number of valence electrons each element has according to the periodic table. So that's that 1, 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 as we move across the periodic table. Once again, if you have multiple of something, you multiply its valence electrons by how many of it you have. And then you're going to add all of these together to get a have number. You will then subtract whatever you got from need and then subtract the have from it to get what I will be referring to as your share number. This is the number of electrons that are going to be shared between those elements. You're going to divide that share number by two because remember each line in a Lewis structure is going to represent two electrons and that's going to tell you how many lines to draw. So your share divided by two tells you how many lines you're going to draw. So then you want to look at your formula and you have to figure out which atom is going to be your central atom. The first element in the formula is usually your central atom. The main exception to this is hydrogen, which cannot be a central atom. In which case, you're going to go to your second element and use that as your central atom. You're going to write this element. Then you're going to write the remaining elements as symmetrically as possible around the central atom. You want everything to look even because molecules like to be even. Then you're going to draw the appropriate number of lines, the lines you determined from step three, to connect the central atom to the other atoms. Keeping in mind, each of those lines represents two electrons. Which leads us to the last step where you're going to draw unshared electrons on elements to make them match the need once you've ran out of lines. So you can't draw any more lines than your share told you you had. So if something only has one line going to it, that's only two electrons, but we said it needed eight, we're going to draw six extra electrons, or three pairs, of unshared electrons in order to give them what they need. Now I know right now you're thinking this doesn't make any sense, but as we practice, you're going to get it. So let's do a practice problem together. You're asked to write the Lewis structure for water, good old H2O. So let's go through our steps. Step number one, we were told to find the need. So we have two hydrogens 
and each of them need two electrons. So two hydrogens each need two electrons. Then my one oxygen needs eight electrons because only hydrogen and helium need two. Everyone else needs eight. So I punch this in, and I know that my need is 12. Perfect. Then I have to do my half. Well, hydrogen only has one electron, but there are still two of it. Meanwhile, oxygen, there's only one still, and it has six valence electrons. So I take my two plus six, which equals eight. In order to find my share, I subtract my need from my half. So 12 minus eight equals four. I then divide my share in half in order to figure out how many lines I'm gonna draw. So four divided by two tells me I can draw two lines. So what's the central atom gonna be? It's gonna be oxygen, because remember we said it was our first element, unless that first element is hydrogen, in which case we go to our second element. So our first element was hydrogen, so we move on to that second element. So I'm gonna place the oxygen in the center and draw hydrogen one off either side because I want it to look symmetrical. So I'm gonna put them all in a straight line and I'm gonna draw a line from one hydrogen to the oxygen and from one hydrogen to the oxygen. So hydrogen only needs two electrons. So if it has a line going to it, that represents two electrons, which means it doesn't need any more. Oxygen, however, needs eight and we only drew two lines, meaning it only has four electrons, so we need to draw four unshared electrons. So once we do that, we'll have a correct answer that looks like this. So we put our oxygen in our center. I put a hydrogen off to either side to make things symmetrical. I drew one line going from one, one line going to the other. Now each line represents two electrons, so hydrogen each has two electrons, but oxygen has one, two, three, four. But up here we said it needed eight, so we add one, two, three, four to make it have eight as well. That's all there is to it. And the more you practice, the easier it's gonna get. So this time you were asked to draw the Lewis structures for the following molecules, CCl4, and pH3. I want you to pause this video and I want you to come back when you are done. I will not be doing the need have share when we come back. I will just be showing you the correct answer. So make sure to work it out so you know how to do this. Pause the video and come back when you're done. All right, let's see how you did. You got a correct Lewis structure if you drew CCL4 like this. You should have ended up with a share of eight, meaning when you divide it in half, you found four. Since carbon was our first element, we put it in the center. Since we want things to be symmetrical and we have four chlorines, you would have put one off either side to make it symmetrical and you drew one line to each one. Now at the end, that means carbon has the eight it needed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Each chlorine, on the other hand, was only sharing two electrons. But it, they needed eight as well, so that is why we added three pairs, or six electrons, to each one to make it match the need. How about pH three? You got the correct answer if you drew this structure. Your share on this one should have worked out to be six, which means three lines. We put our first element in the center, then we drew our remaining ones as symmetrically as possible around the outside. And since our share was six and we could draw three lines, we drew one, two, three lines. This gave each hydrogen two electrons, which is what hydrogen wants, so hydrogen was good but phosphorus wants eight electrons and it only had six according to the lines, so we drew the one unshared pair on there. Hopefully you did well. If not, I recommend reading over the rules and watching the example over again to help yourself out. 
Now in our previous examples, we could only draw one line to each element. But Lewis structures can have multiple bonds going from one element to a different element. To show you what I mean, let's do the Lewis structure for carbon dioxide. So you know carbon dioxide is CO2. So that means carbon needs eight plus di the dioxide means two oxygens and each of them need eight, giving me a total of 24 electrons that I need. As far as half is concerned, carbon has four and oxygen has six and there are still two of them, meaning my half is 16. This leaves my share to be eight and when I divide that in half, that means I'm going to have four lines. We're going to make carbon our central atom because it is the first one, which means we're going to put one oxygen off to either side to make it symmetrical. Then we're going to distribute our unshared electrons. And you may have drawn something that looked like this, where we put our carbon in the center, line, line, and drew all of these dots. But you should have quickly saw that there was a problem. Did we draw four lines? No, we only drew two, so that means something can't be right. We need two more lines. This is where we use what is called a double, or if we do three of them, a triple bond. So that makes our correct Lewis structure still the carbon in the center, but we have two lines going to each oxygen, thus making our oxygens have eight, once we draw those on shares in, and our carbon having eight as well. So always make sure the number of lines you said you were gonna draw is the lines that you need to draw, and sometimes that might mean you make a double or a triple bond happen. So a single bond is a covalent bond in which one pair of electrons is shared by two atoms. A double bond is a covalent bond in which two pairs of electrons are shared by two atoms, so four electrons total. And a triple bond is a covalent bond in which three pairs of electrons are shared by two atoms, so six electrons. You can't have any more than a triple bond. There's no such thing as a quadruple bond. Only three pairs can be shared. Now, as we are working some of these problems, you might notice that sometimes there's not a clear place to put the double or the triple bond. If this is the case, that often means that there are multiple possible valid structures, and we refer to this as having resonance when it could be more than one correct answer. All right, I want you to pause this video and I want you to come back when you've drawn the Lewis structures for these five elements. Pause the video and come back when you're done. All right, let's see how you did. For number one, you should have gotten one hydrogen bonded to the one fluorine and you would have put three unshared pairs around the fluorine. For N2, nitrogen triple bonds to itself, and you would have saw that if you did the need have share, but that's only six electrons, so that means each nitrogen needed an unshared pair with it. NH3 would have looked like this. CH4 looks like this where we don't have any unshared pairs because everyone with just the lines had the amount of electrons they needed. Meanwhile, CF4 doesn't work out that way because fluorine needs eight, so it gets those unshared electrons. How'd you do? We're gonna be practicing with these in class and practice makes perfect, but if you didn't get any of these right, I highly recommend you go back and watch this again so you can um, correct your mistakes before they get too ingrained. Have a great day.